So I think um, we'll make a start. Um, thank you all um, so much for coming. It's really nice to, uh, to meet you this afternoon. Um, so my name is Dr. Carolyn Loveridge. I'm a lecturer in the Graduate School of the College of Medical, Veterinary and Life Sciences. And a heads up that the college is going to be referred to as MVLS throughout the presentation. And we also have my colleagues, Professor George Bailey, who's also from MVLS, and Dr. Zhang Li, who is from the Adam Smith Business School. And we're going to refer to Adam Smith Business School as ASBS during the presentation. Um, so myself and George and Zhang are the programme directors for the laboratory management programme. And today we're very pleased to give you an overview um, of, of the new programme, which is going to be run jointly between MVLS and ESBS. So I hope you can all see the screen okay. Um, so just to give you um, an overview of the programme to begin with, I'll start um, by talking a little bit about why the programme has been developed, first of all. So laboratory management essentially involves having an oversight of the scientific processes, resources and personnel who conduct activities in the laboratory environment. And this applies to all different laboratory environments. Historically, people who have become laboratory managers have done so mainly by working through the ranks from a more junior position by acquiring skills and experience on the job. <clears throat> they generally have received little or no formal training. And so there's a clear unmet need for this program. And so this new MSc program has been tailored specifically to the academic, industrial and clinical laboratory environments, as these are the key uh, laboratory environments which we find. And um, we have opportunities for specialisms in these areas as part of the MSc programme. And the, the overall purpose of the MSc is to enhance student prospects of progression to a managerial position and or the MSc will function as training for newly appointed managers. So moving on, um, so the goal of the programme, um, so the primary goal of the programme is to provide um, you as students with the necessary skills and attributes to enable you to be effective laboratory managers. That's the main um, reason for the programme. Um, we want to give you these skills, we want you all to be great, fantastic laboratory managers. And to achieve this, we will provide you with a grounding in current theory, research methods and practice in central business management disciplines. So that's primarily going to be the remit of um, the Adam Smith Business School. And we're also going to develop your knowledge and understanding of the fundamentals of laboratory practice, the regulations and management in the laboratory environment. And so the specific aims of the program are to provide you with the opportunity to study in depth the relevant theoretical, methodological and technical literature from central business disciplines. We will give you the opportunity to study in depth the fundamental and current topics relating to laboratory management. I'll say at this point that quite a lot of um, what we will do in the laboratory management programme is to provide you with case studies. And so we really want you um, to be thinking about actual events that happen in a laboratory environment and um, think about how you would deal with these particular scenarios. We want to give you the opportunity to utilise and apply the knowledge and skills that you acquire during the taught elements of the programme to relevant problems in laboratory management through completion of an independent research project. So those of you that are going to do the full MSc programme, um, part one third of the masters is the completion of an independent research project. And that will become a little bit clearer um, when I give you the overview of the actual structure of the programme. And we also finally want to give you the relevant knowledge, skills and attributes to enable you to be effective laboratory managers and to move between different uh, laboratory environments. 
Um, so that's something that we envisage that you might do over the course of your career. And so we want to be able to give you the skills um, to be able to do that. So I'm now going to give you an overview of the actual structure of the programme and uh, break that down and give you an overview of the courses that um, are within the programme. So the key features of the, uh, of the master's programme, so it's a three year online distance learning taught MSc programme. Like all MSc programmes, um, it is made up of 180 credits in total and essentially you will study 60 credits in each of the three years of the programme. There are 120 credits in total of taught courses which will be uh, completed in years one and two of the programme. So there are 60 credits um, in core aspects of business management and um, these courses are run by the Adam Smith Business School and you will take 30 credits with ASBS in each of years one and two of the programme. You will also study core aspects of laboratory management. Again, that's a total of 60 credits and those courses will be run by MVLS and like the business courses, you will do 30 credits in each of years one and two. Year three is dedicated to the 60 credit independent research project, and that is for MSc students only. Um, there are opportunities to exit um, either after year one with a postgraduate certificate, so that you would get that if you complete 60 credits of taught courses, um, or if you complete 120 credits of taught courses over years one and two, you have the opportunity to exit with a postgraduate diploma. Um, so that gives you an overview of the, the structure of the programme there in terms of the breakdown of credits um, in the programme. We have four particular paths that you can opt for. Um, we do have, we do have the, the opportunity where you don't take any specialism and you'll just get your master's in laboratory management or we anticipate that you will opt for one of the three specialisms either um, um, in, uh, in academic laboratory management, um, industrial laboratory management or clinical laboratory management. And to achieve a specialism, um, there are two 20 credit taught courses which are run by MVLS where there are tailored assessments to the specific laboratory environments and so in those courses although you will cover the same material the assessment will be focused on those particular specific laboratory environments and also for the specialism the research project um, for the MSc must be in the area of the specialism and so you will complete a total of 100 credits in the specialist area. Okay, um, so in terms of the programme structure and content just to tell you now about the actual courses um, that make up the programme. So um, you can see here that um, along the left hand side we've got semesters one, two and three and then we've got um, in the columns along the top we've got years one, two and three. So in year, um, just also to say semester one runs from September to December, so semester two runs from January to mid-April and semester three runs from mid-April to end of June, as far as I'm aware. So in year one, semester one, the first course which you will take um, is with the business school and that's data driven leadership skills for practitioners. That's a 10 credit course. And you'll also complete a 10 credit course with MVLS, laboratory, health and safety. So in each um, semester, you will complete 20 credits worth of courses. OK, so it's nice and spread out evenly across the year. OK, so you'll do 20 credits in each semester. Year one, semester two, uh, with the business school, you will do um, a practical approach to change management 
and project management for practitioners. So again, these are two 10 credit courses. In the third semester with MVLS, you will do a 20 credit course, and this is one of the specialism courses, and that's laboratory practice governance and ethics. Moving on to year two, in, in semester one, you will do one course with the business school, um, that's uh, operations management, theory to practice. And for the MVLS, you'll do providing training and supervision in the laboratory. In semester two, with the business school, you'll do two 10 credit courses, leading successful teams and business financial management. And uh, in semester three, with MVLS, you'll do another 20 credit specialism course, and that's fundamentals of laboratory management. So that's the top courses um, are in years one and two, and they make up 120 credits. And then in year three, for those that progress to the MSc, then you will complete your research project over the course of year three. Okay. So I hope that gives you a good overview of the courses um, that make up the program and um, obviously where these fit in, in terms of the different semesters throughout the year. Um, so yeah, we can answer obviously any specific questions. We're very happy to take questions at the end of the presentation um, if, if, if there are any questions um, about that. So I'm now going to hand over to George, who's going to tell you a little bit about the teaching approach and the assessments for the programme, who the key staff are for the programme and why um, you should choose Glasgow and an MVLS for choice of study. So I'll hand over to George. Thanks, Carolyn. Um, I saw you shifted it. That's good. Yeah, so we we're, we tried to design the course um, so that it would keep your interest on a number of different levels. Um, so it's not just going to be working through PowerPoints and things like that. We're, obviously, there will be lectures and we'll have seminars, we'll have tutorial groups, um, and you will be able to interact with each other uh, on, on online activities. We'll have things like journal clubs where we'll discuss um, a given topic so that um, we'll, there will be some peer-to-peer -peer, um, sort of learning. And we'll also have discussion forums. And as, as Caroline said, a lot of uh, the activity is based around case studies where we take a known incident or um, happening that's influenced uh, lab safety or, or, or lab teaching and then we'll take that as an example and, and, we'll, and we'll, we'll, we'll pull that apart uh, so that you can learn um, why the thing happened and what's the best way to deal with it. And then we've also got student directed activities, um, which are things that you work together in groups to do online activities. Um, there'll be different assessments, which I'm going to tell you about. Uh, and I think all, all the way through the course, we, we were quite big on reflective practice where you can just you know take take five minutes to reflect on what you've been doing as you go through and uh, journal clubs as well. Next slide. And obviously, um, because we're a university, we've got to do assessments. Um, so we've got both summative and formative um, assessments or opportunities. And the summative ones um, are formally um, marked and they're things like, your case studies, your oral presentations, uh, audit reports and incident evaluations where we will give you an example, as I said, of a case study and then you'll have to write and um, critically evaluate the circumstance, circumstances in and around that. Uh, you also write risk assessments because, you know, as in the laboratory, everything's got to be risk assessed before it's carried out. Uh, and there's also a part for uh, reflective writing. And that's that will be um, assessed in a summative way. And then we've got our formative um, side because in all good courses, you've got a summative and formative assessment. And this will be more like online quizzes. So you'll be able to test yourself to see how well you, the learning uh, is actually, your learning is going. Um, we'll have discussion forums with your peers and academics. Um, and that will just be the form of open discussions, where again, 
that's a really good way to pick up some points uh, if you've missed that during the lectures. And they've got question and answer sessions. And again, there'll be a lot of peer to peer interaction between uh, all of the people on the course. So we hope that's a good mix of formative and uh, summative. Okay, yeah, so who are we? Well, we've introduced ourselves. You, you've met Carolyn and you met myself. You're about to, to meet Jan. Um, and we are the programme directors for MBLS and uh, ASBS. Uh, we've got programme administrators who um, do a lot of the paperwork. And then we've got course leaders for individual courses. And you can see that Caroline and myself, um, I've got a course each. Uh, and there's other people running different courses who you'll get to meet um, in both MBLS and ASBS. So although we are programme directors, um, a lot of the day-to-day the -day teaching is done not by us, although we do do some. And then why choose Glasgow? Well, that's an easy one for me. Been here for 30 years. Uh, it's the fourth oldest university in the English speaking world. It's in the top 80 universities in the world. And if you think about that, that's an incredible number because there's thousands and thousands of universities all around the world and we're in the top 80. So it is a very high ranked university. Or of course, a member of the Russell Group, which is uh, the 21 best universities, universities in the UK, a member of that. And we're voted Scottish University of the Year uh, uh, in 2022. And I'd say the best thing about the university is the student population, because we've got almost 30,000 students. So it's, it's a huge uh, university. And they're from a very diverse background of over 140 countries. So the university itself is, is a great place to, to uh, work and to be because of the diversity and the international nature of it. And why? Well, again, I've been in this college for 30 years. Um, the college is very broad. Um, MVLS is very broad. It covers everything from data management right down to, to clinical things uh, and everything in between, molecular bioscience. Um, and the college is here to deal with the challenges of modern times. And we, we do that by involving people like academics, clinicians, NHS, companies, and we come together uh, to, to deliver internationally leading um, teaching and research. And we score very highly in the UK for things like dentistry, food science, medicine. Uh, these are all top five. And we're, we're actually fifth in the UK for biological services. Uh, and we've got a very high percentage of world leading outputs in uh, research assessment, uh, which was done in 2021, I think. Uh, and the course is upheld by the graduate school, which you know very well, and it provides training and teaching for clinicians, researchers and, and allied health professionals. Um, and it's a dedicated building where all of our postgraduate um, courses are coordinated and it's done in a very efficient manner. And we have over 1,200 postgraduate students in our college alone, if you think about that. That's larger than quite a few universities. And uh, we would say it was a thriving intellectual community um, as we get the best researchers and we recruit the best researchers from all around the world. So I'm going to pass you over to Zhang, who's going to try and beat that with uh, by telling you about the Adam Smith Business School. Certainly, we can beat it. Um, <laughs> so um, just a very brief overview of our Adam Smith Business School. Uh, when you're signing up to this online program, um, you will be exposed to the most up-to-date business education delivered by our Adam, Adam Smith Business School uh, teaching faculty. So as you can see from the name, our business school was named after one of the university's most famous alumni, Adam Smith. And this year we're celebrating Adam Smith's 300th birthday. And um, so we are trying to, you know, like uh, uh, inherit that legacy and then use it to inform our curriculum design. So linking to that Adam Smith uh, legacy, our school's uh, mission is to sustain and foster a place of outstanding quality, research informed and professionally focused, bringing together inspiring people for the purposes of research, learning and teaching, and engaging with corporate and policy connections with impact locally and globally. 
what it means to our cur curriculum development is that um, our teaching staff are trying to embed real business cases in all the courses we deliver and try to offer you the opportunity to, up, uh, to, to understand better of the framework theories and knowledge skills and give you that opportunity also to um, apply what you've learned in a very meaningful uh, environment, assessment environment. We're very proud, our business school is very proud of um, having that triple accreditation. Um, through, from AACSB, AMBER, and Equus. So AMBER is association of MBA, um, which accredits our MBA program. AACSB and Equus accredits our business school as a whole. In 2020, our business school um, became an advanced signatory of United Nations uh, principles of responsible management education. And this really signifies our commitment to promote sustainability and also responsible management in teaching uh, and research and also our practices. In 2019, our business school received the Athena's One Award, which uh, bronze award, which signifies our commitment to uh, gender equality, inclu uh, inclusion and also diversity. I'm also going to maybe uh, run, uh, run through a very quick, you know, like uh, our, our rankings, league tables. Many of our subjects are highly ranked by both domestic and international rankings. For example, our master's in finance was ranked the 49th in the world by the Financial Times uh, just early this year. Our master of global business was ranked 23rd in the world by the QS and our business and management was ranked uh, the eighth in the UK by the Guardian University rankings. And finally, our Adam Smith Business School as a whole was ranked the top 100 European business schools by the Financial Times. So really keen to actually have you on board, you know, like to study with our business school and also MVOS. Uh, I hope, you know, so far the session has given you that flavor of how it's like, you know, studying um, with the University of Glasgow on this very exciting program. I'm now going to hand over back to my colleague, Daniel, who is going to lead on the Q&A session. Hi there. Thank you for that. That was an excellent introduction about the, the program, and I hope our students have found it really useful. There was lots of information there about our courses and modules. I don't know if that has actually answered a lot of the student questions that we had in before the before the webinar. Um, we have had a couple of questions in through the chat today, so I'm gonna I'm gonna read them out first and see if our academics can answer them first before we go into the pre-registered um, questions. So our first question today is, can you elaborate about the diploma and the certificate in lab management? So maybe just talk about the differences between the certificate and the diploma. Yep. Um, yep. Yes, if you bear with me. Yep. OK, so hopefully you can see the slide now. I've put the program structure um, back up there. Um, so just to clarify that for the postgraduate certificate, you need to complete 60 credits of taught courses. And so essentially, that would be the courses here that are outlined in year one. So each year you do 60 credits. So to get the postgraduate certificate, you would be doing the data-driven leadership skills, laboratory health and safety, practical approach to change management, project management for practitioners, and laboratory practice governance and ethics. So that adds up to 60 credits and that would be what you would be doing to get the postgraduate certificate. Um, for the diploma, you would need to complete all the courses in years one and two. So that would add up to a total of 120 credits. So you'd be doing everything apart from the research project um, to get the postgraduate diploma. Okay. Does that, Excellent. Hope that answers the question. <laughs> Thank you. I think it does. Thank you very much. Um, one of our next questions is about the application. So we have a student that's asking, is it compulsory to obtain the full transcripts of the subjects that, and the grades that they completed during their previous studies, as it's not closely relevant to the programme that they're applying for now? So their previous qualification is a BSc in computer science. Would they need to provide the full transcripts of that in their application for lab management? 
I think as um, part of standard practice for admissions, I think you do need to provide transcripts, is my understanding. Um, George or Zhang, do you want to comment on them? No, I, th I think you're right, Carolyn. I think you've got to supply your transcripts. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So I hope that answers the student question. Um, another question that we've had popped in the chat. Do students get an opportunity to shadow any of the university lab managers to get some live experience and a feel for the job? So for this, um, really the sort of live experience or the practical experience would come in year three when you're doing your project. Um, so depending on whether you're already employed, um, so this is a part-time online distance learning programme, so we anticipate that some of you um, will already be in employment, perhaps in a laboratory environment. Um, so depending on that, um, whether you are or not, I mean, if, if, if you are employed in a laboratory environment, we envisage you would do your project with your employer. Um, if, 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 if you aren't, then we can potentially um, organised projects that would be um, working with um, a university laboratory managers. Um, George, did you want to add to that? No, not really, but um, I mean, it depends on, I mean, the, but the projects wouldn't be actually in the lab, Caroline, would they? Would they? Mm, might or might be or might depend it depends on locations doesn't it uh, i mean yeah, yeah. Um, it depends on the nature of the project as well so it might be more a kind of dry investigative project that you do mm. as opposed to actually hands-on doing something in the lab so it might be that you're maybe doing a, a critical review of the literature um or some other kind of dry investigative work. So I think that's um, something that, yeah, we would need to see or speak with students yes. on a on a one to one Individual. basis. Yeah, yeah, in terms that of what sense. what they want to do for their project, I would say, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Another question is, are there any times during the course that we would be expected to come onto campus or is the qualification fully online distance learning? Um, so the qualification is fully online distance learning. Um, so there's no um, kind of set periods whereby you would be required to, to come to campus. So it's a fully online distance learning. Thank you. If there are any students that live in Glasgow or near Glasgow, they are going to get a student card. Um, so if you are near Glasgow and you do want to come on campus, you can also still use the facilities just as an on-campus student. So there's not much difference there between an online distance learning student and an on-campus student. Um, so if you are nearby and want to use the facilities, you can. Um, another question is, is this qualification suitable for someone already in a management position but wanting a formal qualification? Um, I would say yes. <laughs> yeah, I would also say yes. And I think it would certainly go if, if someone had designs on getting promotion and moving up the, the, the ladder and taking on more responsibility. I think this course is perfect for that. Great. Another question in we've got is, is it possible say after attaining the SER or DIP to register for the MSC, say after the two or three years and after that? So my understanding would be that you could potentially have a gap between um, between in study, but I think there's a five-year window. So I think if you were going to do the MSC, you need to complete it in a five-year window is my understanding yeah uh -huh. so if a student decides that they want to just do the certificate they can enroll and do the certificate and if it's going well and they want to continue to do the diploma they can register and do the diploma and continue with their studies and it can still stay in the same structure as you see on the screen just now and you can also, if you're doing well and you wish to continue your studies and obtain the full MSc, you can continue still and just enroll and register for your MSc. 
Um, so you don't have to have a gap. But as Carolyn just mentioned, yes, you have a window. So say that the full, if you if you need to take a gap within your studies, then you can do, um, so long as it's a five year window. Just checking the other questions. Can you discuss the fees as well of the program? So yeah, th there's um... a couple of um scholarship questions as well so so the fee structure carolyn do you want to mention something here yeah i'm just going to share my screen um with the information here so hopefully that helps so this is on the website um so yeah so this obviously gives information about the total cost of the program but um usually what you would do is pay in installments per each 20 credits that you do um, so that's my understanding of how that works, and that's as stated on here on the website. Hopefully, you can uh, see that there. <laughs> yes, uh -huh, excellent. So yeah, UK, EU, and international all pay the same fees, um, and the prices are there for the PG Cert, PG Dev, and the MSc. Hopefully that answers the student question. With regards to scholarships and funding, there are no direct scholarships or funding linked to the programme. However, we do have a scholarship table that maybe Caroline's pulling up. I'll pop a link in the chat. Um, and we will also follow up in the email with um, some helpful links for students to be able to access some information on our website. Um, and this is the little scholarship table here. So you can pop in what country you're from, what qualification you're doing, and it will bring up some opportunities that are currently available for students to apply for. We've had another student question come in and it is, is it possible to complete year two and year three simultaneously? So in the same year? I think the answer to that would be no. No. Yeah. You're right. I think that, yes, I mean, and that's maybe more akin to full time study there. Um, no, you can't complete years um, together. No. Is there any, is there reasons for that? Are the courses run at certain times? I think it's really just workload so for uh, a part time online distance learning program, then the kind of prescribed or the pattern would be that you do 20 credits per term. Um, mm -hmm. So to try and do more than that, um, it's then really not part time, just, you know, it's not part time study, essentially, um, because you're then almost at the level of full time study if you're trying to do two years together. So, yeah. That's understandable. We have had a student question come in about research projects. Um, they're asking what kind of projects do students take up? Are any of our academics available to mention any as an example today on what type of research projects students would normally um, take? Do you want to answer this one, George? Or... Well, and it's... It's going to be, as you say, it's going to be done on a, an individual basis. If, if you're already in a lab, then it would be a project that we'd help you devise for your lab environment that you're in. And as Callum said, if we don't have, if, you do, if you're not in a lab, uh, then, you know, we'll help you come up with a project with someone in, that's in a lab. So it really depends on your situation. Um, but it'll be in and around your specialism, if you're specialising, uh, and the the details of the project will be um, hammered out by you and the project team, uh, the, the, like us, uh, so that you've got a, a project that's for 60 credits and also will give you the correct learning outcomes. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, um, you know, when you're at the end of your second year, uh, before you start the project, then you would have a lot of interaction with us to, to come up with a project. Um, yeah, because this is, I'll, I'll maybe add, because this is a new master's mm -hmm. program, we can't really I give can you me. examples. Um, so oh, and you're on mute. I'm on mute. Uh, hang on. 
Uh, is that working now? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, sorry, just to add, um, because this is a brand new master's programme, um, we can't really give you examples yet in terms of what other students have done, um, because this is going to be the first time that this runs. Um, so, yeah, we can't really, you know, um, maybe put you in contact with previous students or anything like that, um, because uh, we don't have that as this is a new programme. Great. Thank you. Um, we've had a student question saying, is this ever on weekends or is this weekday only classes? So the course schedule, um, it's not 100% fixed in that you will work through the learning and activities. So really we would release material on a week by week basis. And so you'll be covering you know, you'll have a, a kind of a week window to to work through a particular um, topic or session um, and you'll work through at your own pace. Um, there may be some live sessions which students have uh, will have the opportunity to attend, um, but in general, um, it's it, there's not a prescribed timetable. So you'll be working through the, the learning and activities for a particular week within that time frame at your own pace and in your own time. So yeah, there's not a kind of set timetable, um, you know. So you'll basically just work through things um, as as and when works best for you. Excellent. Yeah. So that sort of answers another student question that we already had sent in, which was, um, if are the sessions pre-recorded, and if they are, can we access them afterwards? No, sorry, if any are live, can we access them afterwards? So that sort of answers that as well. Um, so for any live sessions, I think we would try and record that um, for the benefit of students that aren't able to attend. Um, although I think live sessions would be more tutorial based. Um, so it might be more sort of discussion that's happening, um, but yeah, we would certainly try and record it. But um, yes, the majority of material is pre-recorded and we'll work through it at the end. Great. Some of the other questions we've had is, I'm already pursuing a biomedical sciences degree. And does this, pro so would this programme suit me? Yes, I think that's a very good background for, for this programme. Um, yes, I think that's absolutely fine. That's as, long as, you're not, as long as you're not doing them both at once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a lot. Yeah. Somebody has actually asked, what's the time commitment required for the programme? So the kind of rough rule of thumb is that um, in terms of notional learning at risk, so for a 10 credit course, um, we would expect, say, 100 hours of notional learning. So it's always 10 times the number of credits of notional learning. So, yeah, so there is quite a, um, there is quite a lot of um, self-directed learning um, that's expected at master's level. Um, so that's the kind of rule of thumb. For a, 20, for a 10 credit course, it would be roughly 100 hours. For a 20 credit course, it would be roughly 200 hours. Someone has asked, can students from the Netherlands enroll? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's fine. We accept students from anywhere in the world. They can apply for the programme. Another student question is, what kind of lab does this training programme aim for? Biochemical labs or battery labs? Well, so it's all labs have got specialisms. So um, I'm working in an academic lab, but there's people, we, we envisage people coming from industry to do this um, and the National Health Service as well. So all kind of labs, uh, we think this, this course could be tailored to your needs, I think. Great. We've had another student question in the chat. If you finish the certificate or the diploma, is it possible to attend the graduation or is it just for the MSc? I think you can um, 
yeah, I think that's fine. Uh -huh. um, yeah, you would still be able to graduate with a, a certificate or a diploma. Yep. And the graduations are in person. I, I don't know what when the what month they fall in, but we do have several points in a year for graduations and they're beautiful ceremonies on our campus and there's lots going on in the day. So they are fantastic even for our online distance learning students to come onto campus and experience that. So it is a great way to end your studies. There are currently no other questions coming in, so I think we've answered everything. Um, I hope everyone's found it useful today. I want to say thank you very much for our academics for providing all that information and being able to answer all of the questions today. Um, we will be following up with an email to everybody who has registered for the event. You'll be able to access the webinar recording from that email. It will also be on our YouTube channel. Um, and hopefully we've answered everything today but if there are any other questions we did have a, a contact slide I think that Carolyn had up we can add these into the um, email as well so that people can get in touch if they need to about their application or any program questions but hopefully we'll be able to welcome everybody in September thank you for joining the webinar today thank you very much thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you.